Hello and welcome to yet another video. And today we have a B350 Gaming Pro Carbon. This came to me untested, so this is probably faulty in some sort of way. Let's get this out and see what is wrong with it. And now the board is out. And one thing I immediately saw was there are scratches on the audio I see. Or on the cover of the audio I see. If you could see that. Yeah, these scratches right there. Uh, but I cannot see any knocked off components or the capacitors look like they get a little bit damaged But I don't think that that would cause any problem um, But this gives a good indication that there might be some knocked off components so that the person was cry quite rough with this mainboard the previous one, but so far I can't see anything else that is too big we have post LEDs so I think we are right going to go into plugging a CPU into here and see for the passive power consumption and then continue from there on. So the board is built up and let's see the passive power consumption is about 160 milliamps so that is very fine. Let's get a power button onto here and let's now see how this behaves. And so far we have a CPU LED stuck with 2.2 amps of power draw. So I think our CPU isn't getting initialized right here. Because I also don't have any post codes. Not on my DDR tester, not on my PCIe card. And we're still stuck on CPU. Um, this might mean that the CPU isn't recognized either by the BIOS or that we have some sort of boot failure regarding the CPU voltages or a CPU enable signal. And we need to find out what that is. And first thing I want to go is for something easy. I want to put a different CPU in here and see if it behaves differently. And with now with the 3000G, let's put it in and see if anything changes. But it seems to be that we're still stuck on a CPU LED. So the very first one at the top. And the power consumption is also very static. This time a little bit more probably because of the processor. So this might be a BIOS issue. But we have seen the physical damage before on the audio IC. So what I would now do is to do the usual inspection of, um, of for physical damage. And see if we can find especially something around the CPU's uh, socket and on the back side of the main board behind the CPU socket or somewhere there if there's something knocked off. So let's turn this off and let's disconnect some of the cables that we have here. And now under the microscope let's inspect the area. So you can see this is the bottom left of the CPU socket. And this is where I most of the time start my search. So I go around. Trying to see if I see anything obvious. Most of the time it's a missing resistor. Um, missing capacitors very, very rarely um, prevent boot. Sometimes, sometimes they are responsible for not booting. Because um, some circuits need capacitors like for bootstrapping for example. And they won't work without that capacitor then. But that very rarely happens. It did happen to me before on a 5 volt regulator where the bootstrapping capacitor was missing. And with that the 5 volt wasn't running. But that was on a GPU actually. Not on a mainboard. But it could surely also happen to a mainboard. So let's continue on the side of the, of the, C, uh, of the CPU socket. And now we are on the top of a CPU socket, but so far I can't really see anything. This is now the bottom uh, top right. Um, but this also looks fine. Like the screw holes don't look nice, but that shouldn't be a problem. And this is now the VRM controller. I had very often had physical damage around this area, which is very close to the to the mounting hole. But this time it doesn't seem to be the case. It looks fairly clean around here. And here you can also often have damage around where the um, 
8 pin connects for the CPU. I had that someone has ripped off these components here. These are for enabling V core, but these look fine. Let's now go around the SIO and see. And I can already see something because this was very close to the area where the audio I see is. But the thing that I can see now is if you have a look, there's a sc big scratch here, but there was no component like anywhere here. But this resistor here got a good hit and this might be damaged. It might be good, it might be damaged. We will have to take the measurements of that and see how much it should be. Just like this one, this might be an adductor. This might have also taken a hit. Um, let's first continue a little bit of a search because this is not as an indicator as I would hope to find why this isn't running because that resistor might be good. It isn't obviously like knocked off of the board. So let's continue a little bit to see if there's any obvious damage. Like, and the thing is damage around the audio. I see I wouldn't expect that to, to prevent the boot. So we're going to be continuing the search in other um, in other areas, like for example around this PCIe ledge, where often something gets broken, but it looks fine so far. Okay, so far I wasn't able to determine anything on the front side. Um, one more thing I quickly want to check is how uh, much we have on our battery. So let's get our multimeter on here. So now in voltage mode, let's see. And we have three volts, so that, that should be fine. Let's then go onto the backside of the board and see if we can find any physical damage there. There's very often st uh, stuff knocked off uh, around the VRM, but in this case, there's only this small circuit here for the VRM on the back uh, on the back of the board. Um, I've very rarely had it that uh, any capacitors or resistors are knocked off right uh, on the back of the CPU, and in this case, it also looks fine. So let's find another spot. We have this screw hole that has definitely has some scratches. But I don't think any of the scratches are deep enough to break the connection of these traces. So I think this might be something that we want to look at with the multimeter, but I'm, I really don't think this is a problem. I think these are just the solder mask that was scratched off and not the actual traces. So I wasn't able to determine any more damage than this one. So I will now look at a schematic, find out what uh, what value this resistor is supposed to have and what is this, what it is responsible for. And we're going to check together if that resistor is still fine or not. So after having a look at the schematic, this seems to be a one mega ohm resistor for VBAT and case open. So I really don't think that this has anything to do with our problem. But let's see what the multimeter says. And we see almost exactly one mega ohm, 0.99 or, uh, of a mega ohm. So that is definitely fine. So I don't have anything more for here to see uh, where I could see any physical damage. So we're going to go over to flash the BIOS on this and to try to reset the BIOS to see if we get any further with that. And I want to show you the procedure that I do on MSI boards. So what I do is I have a usual program, I have a USB extension lead right here. And what I also have is this clip here that is just with pins that go into here. And as you can see, I've branded this MSI if I flip it on, it, uh, on its head. And we have a connector at the end here that was gloriously hot glued. But the good thing is this connector, as you can see, I've marked pin one right in this corner. Sorry for the autofocus. Um, and 
There's pin one marked on the board right here. Let's get you under the microscope so that it's easier to see. So this is the BIOS and you can see this is the BIOS header and the one in the top right is marked one. And we have on our connector, we have this corner marked as one. So I'm going to be plugging in the connector and this is what we will program the BIOS now with. With, uh, with this adapter connected to the um, to the CH3041A, just like we did before, just with a nice easy connector where it can connect you on uh, for MSI boards and do it a lot faster. So the BIOS is now flashed, and in your programmer, I saw that this is actually a 1.8 volt chip. So I quickly disconnected everything and put the 1.8 volt adapter on there and it should be fine because it read correctly after that with the 1.8 volt adapter and it programmed fine. So let's now see if anything of our boot behavior has changed for this board. And this is still the 3000G. Let's turn it on and see. And we're still stuck add a CPU LED. We don't get any postcodes and we're still stuck at like two amps of power consumption. So no real change. Let's try to plug in the 2200G and see if that has any difference. And we seem to get postcodes. And as you can see, the power consumption is jumping a lot and the post LEDs are also jumping. Let's see to get anything on our output. And I have indi an indication on my keyboard. So what we're going to do, let's see again, let's restart this and see if we can get a post, um, post screen actually up. And there it is. There's our BIOS. Very, very nice. So this was a BIOS problem actually. Um, the 3000G wasn't posting because I think it isn't supported on this mainboard, um, which happened quite often to me so far. Um, yeah, uh, I'm quickly going to be populating all four DIMMs, going to be testing the M.2 and going to be testing the PCIe, and then we will see each other again. And now our board is fully built up. And... We have four sticks of RAM, we have the 2600 in here, we have our RTX, uh, RTX, yeah, RX 460 in here. And uh, our power consumption right now and passive power consumption is about three and a half amps. Let's now get a stress test running on here, then that I can do my usual tests of uh, Linpack Extreme and then also run uh, the Valley or in this case Heaven benchmark for to stress the GPU and let's now see if we going to run Linpack Extreme right here. Now Linpack is running and let's see for the power consumption. For that I'm going to switch it to the microscope so that you can see it better. And now with Linpack running as you can see in the top right we have almost 10 amps of power consumption of our 12 volts. So 110 watts right now and as you can see, this is our this is our bot running right now, and we have also Ethernet connected, and yeah, so this has been a nice little fix. So you saw how I would proceed when we have no boot and a stuck CPU. Very first thing is try a different CPU. If that doesn't work, try um. Try to see if there's physical damage like we saw on the side of the audio chip and try the back side, try all, all of around the CPU socket. And if that didn't work, I'll go right to the BIOS and with this nice little adapter that we have now for the uh, adapter, it was very easy and fast to just plug it in there, no soldering requi required, instantly flash it on the PC. And yeah, this was able to bring this board back to life. This is a very common issue that boards have, especially if they, um, uh, if someone has put them away for quite some time. This happens very often. 
There might be the possibility that we would have gotten away with resetting the CMOS on this um, on this main board, but I wouldn't be so sure about that. But now we have a working working main board again. Everything is being uh, able. Uh, everything is being recognized. The RAM, this, uh, the USB, the PCIe, and I'm very happy with that. So I hope you learned something. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe to the video. This has been Mainboard Medic. Thank you very much and goodbye.